Well, I'm thinking if I go down here and walk along, if there is spectacular on the side, which is the thing I want to photograph, well, I'll be able to photograph it and then come down. If there's nothing there, I can just come down. So rather than bush bashing, bashing my way upwards, when I'm already this far down, and then, you know, the ultimate goal is to go right along here, down to that swamp that's at the base of Mount Lofty, which is over the edge of that ridge down there, and find a way into that to look for the banata there, because we know from those photographs in Lowry 3, uh, part 3 of the Magnum Opus. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I think it, it's, it's so over the top. It's 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 it's, it's so grand, speaking over the top that it's. I mean, it's also funny, and um, you know, oh, we're going to be talking about it for years, I'm sure, because you know, everyone talks about a magnum a magnum opus, but they of course they talk about it in a uh, esoteric sort of um, taking the piss sort of way. <laughs> I don't know whether Anna Lowry is taking the piss or, or he hasn't realised that scientists, when they say they talk about their magnum opus, they're taking the piss. Is it the fact that, you know, Australians take the piss so much that they don't actually see when other people overseas actually take the piss? <laughs> uh, I don't know, but anyway. Maybe that was the thing, and maybe um, uh, Stuart McPherson... Uh, couldn't get him to sign on the dotted line uh, unless maybe that was the stipulation of the contract that you know I'm only going to do this if you put magnum opus underneath or something <laughs> and Stuart said okay <laughs> I don't know but uh, I mean I mean if you got a magnum opus on a work like that what is someone else going to do for their uh, ecological monograph in the future how do you go beyond magnum magnum opus there's only really one one way you can go beyond magnum opus but uh, <laughs> he certainly raised the bar hasn't he so uh, <laughs> uh, but please god please god don't have it filled with those maps i mean i'll just i think i'll just chuck my if i ever get if i ever get a copy if i can ever afford a copy um if it's full of those bloody maps again, which are the same ones, so I, have to, I think I'd chuck it in the bin, I think. Oh, I'm so sick of seeing those identical maps, page after page of identical map. Why can't you just have one awesome, smegging two-page map? You know, maybe four two-page maps without the, a volume or something, showing all the different interrelationships between the, the various groupings of the species. Surely that would be far more beneficial and more scientific in a way. But look at these young uh, casuarina cones, worth a shot. Strobili. Yeah, there were two of them. Plural. Okay. But, uh, oh, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's the spirit of Star Wars. Maybe that's what it is, you know. Star Wars, the new Star Wars comes out in 2014, Disney style. And it'd be magnum of us. <laughs> Maybe that's what you got to do, release it to the, the music of Star Wars. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's what I'll do. Get someone to buy me a copy and I'll film it and put the Star Wars music to it. But, uh, yeah. As I said, I'm in two minds. Does he really, does, doesn't he, is he doing that on purpose or he doesn't realise that that's a scientist's way of taking the piss? <laughs> and they've been doing it for centuries. Talking about my magnum opus. <laughs> or is it a way of uh, getting people to talk about him long after he's gone? Because what, he must be, uh, must be nearly 70 now, surely. So, uh, I did notice in something where, uh, fairly recently I got to see that he was eating a lot of fruit. So maybe he's had a cancer scare or something. Or well, he just likes fruit. <laughs> Eating a lot of, what was it, grapes or something. So, uh, oh. well, he just likes being a big shitter, I don't know. <laughs> uh, grape seeds, they're good for the arse. Um, yeah. So, is this the edge now? I've gone too far, so... Uh, do I go down and have a look? 
we'll go up and have a look. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't know. It's in two minds now. But I have to admit, he did make me smile. I looked at it and I thought, you are. I thought, is he pushing it or what? Or doesn't he know? I mean, it was like, it was like so they made me smile because I couldn't work out whether he was taking the taking the mickey or the piss himself I'm the only I'm the only in quotes scientist has actually come out with a magnum opus everything else is called something else <laughs> I mean you don't see uh, Darwin's uh, thesis on uh, natural selection co uh, well it was a co-author wasn't it with uh, Wallace I'm sure that doesn't have magnum opus attached to it does it I mean it is a magnum opus but I don't think any major scientific entity has ever come out with something that they've actually, you know, stamped on the front. Magnum over it. So, well, I suppose, he's, one thing, he's got me talking about it, I suppose. But, jeez. <laughs> uh, I mean, is he going to actually make a reference to it in... Uh, Oh, here we go. Oh, there you go. That's worth it. I'm glad I came. There you go. Magnum rocks or something. Oh, bloody trees in the way, but it would be nice. Yep, here we go. Here's this bit of a wall face or whatever. Uh, I wonder what uh, tuberous drops grows out of this. Can we see any? evidence of any dead remains well there you go boss you've got your lichens there haven't you look at that look at the color isn't it strange how nature seems to select opposite colors of quite a lot or outstanding counter counter effective colors but geez look at that there you go boss i mean is that going to focus on or do i have to put on macro it's so bright, I don't even have to stop down, I don't think. Whoa. Well, there you go, Rossi. Well, oh, got a shadow in the way, right? Uh, how do I get this one? Uh, try, sort of. I'm hot and bothered. And, and there's another shot out there of that thing. Before I slip off the mountain, my. And look at that square one for you, um, Ev. Oh. Uh, do I really want to get up there because I might get trapped up there? Uh, do I need to go down or...? Ooh, oh. Anyway, we'll see. But I think this, the, the day is rapidly coming to an end. As long as I don't start an avalanche, an avaslide. Uh, Avatar, thanks for all the fish. Now. You back yourself. Sideways one. You get the full, the full way. I can't, I can barely. I can't pick up the beauty because I can barely. Black and white screen, bright as anything because it's, uh, you know, yeah, maybe down around sort of thing. See what we can pick up on the way. But as I said, really basically you've got to go over there and back and find a way into uh, the back end of that swamp. And it's already two ridges over. So, you know, it's half a day, yeah, three hours I reckon. An hour to an hour and a half, get halfway, another hour and a half the other way. That's to get down into the swamp, I reckon. Find a way in. So that's a trip, another trip for another year, probably next year, next season. And definitely after a bushfire, if there's a bushfire like they had Ash Wednesday, that's when it was burnt out down there. And that's why they, uh, those photographs, uh, I was told, but I was actually told by the man who took the photographs, yes. We went, we went, Donnie and I, we actually went round and saw him because we picked up the, I, I was showing 
my black and white Sedoni, my old black and white CPN Sedoni, and I was going through addresses. And lo and behold, his address in Blackwood was in CPN, and we thought on the off charts, he can't still be living, he must be over 70 or something. Uh, and we just went around and knocked on the door, and there he was. I think he was like 77 or something at the time. I can't remember what his age was, but he was definitely in his 70s. And he was still pretty chirpy then. He showed us his greenhouse and he had his massive... Um, he had these massive green hoods, you know? I mean, really massive ones. They come from some special location, he reckons. I said, oh, I wasn't really into those green hoods sort of thing. I've seen ones in WA and... Uh, uh, when was it? A bit later than that. A couple of years later I saw a ham what I call a hammer orchid in um, Mount Magnificent Park and that really was shocking. I touched this thing and this like labellum thing came shooting out at me. You know it wasn't like a normal trigger plant where the plate goes up. This thing yeah it looked like it was coming about <laughs> shooting out some sort of dart thing or something you know. I can see why well, I called it a hammer orchid but uh, yeah, that was impressive, I must admit. Even I was impressed by a plant doing that. I mean, this was it's quite a big flower, and it had this thing in there, and it came out at me. I mean, it wasn't just like a pallet moving up. It was more than that, you know? So, uh, I don't know. It could be even a new thing out there. No, it wasn't even... It just, we happened to be there. I think I even... I, yeah, I, I know I took photographs of it. It could have been on the old... Two Smega, uh, may have been on video, it may be in the lockup, I don't know, but I definitely took some photographs of the actual plant. I think it was two photographs. So, yeah, it must have been if I only took two photographs, it must have been the old Two Smega, but um, you know, I was trying, but not trying too hard because I, I just didn't have the um, you know, the capacity to you know, guarantee if I just press the button, I'm going to get a good shot, sort of thing. And the, the memory on the old two speaker wasn't very large, you know. So uh, it was a halfway house between what we used to do in the old days and uh, and uh, stuff. But uh, oh, look at that! There you go. Another one for Rossi. But yeah, I mean the old days in WA. I mean when I first started off, I had an old Instamatic, one of these. One of the, it was one of the first. Um, uh, easy access. Uh, my grandmother uh, mother had given it to me to take photographs, and uh, I don't know how much it must cost them, but I think it cost a lot. Anyway, it was one like one of the first, you know. Um, it, one, it was what I'm trying to say. It was one of the first cartridge things in there, all in one cartridge. You just slap the cartridge in. You got either 12, 24, or 36 cartridges. You slapped it in the back, you took your photographs, you put it in for processing. And here's the thing, in the days when violet crumble cost five cents, yeah, a whole violet crumble only cost five cents, one of those cartridges, whether it was 12, 24, 36, didn't matter, it took three weeks to get back. Usually three weeks and one day, something like that. You put it in on a Monday, you get it back three weeks, a Tuesday, in three weeks' time. That was at the beginning of the 70s. By the end of the 70s, they cut it down to about two weeks. So, you know, you know like 78, uh, about 1978, 79, it'd take you two weeks and a day usually to get your, uh, get your photographs back after putting them in. And of course, you never knew what you were going to get. You always knew that half of them would be either out of focus or crap. And, uh, oh, Jesus, have I chosen an awful way to get down, haven't I? Anyway, time to start a new clip, I think.